I'd like a ride out to Skull Island, please. I told you not until I get a compass. If you find me one, I'll take you to Skull Island. Cool, a magnetic pin. Okay. Hmm. It just sits there. I get the feeling I'm missing some key ingredient. It's full of seawater. Hey, neat, it points north. Science is fun when you know the secret. Well, I admit I had my doubts at first, but it looks really nice all put together. Here, take this compass. This is a compass? Will it work? Of course, see how it points north? Wow, that's incredible. How'd you do that? Eh, it was nothing. I'd like a ride out to Skull Island, please. All right, let's go. Even the bravest of men must dread the horror of this place. Steal your courage, boy, now, before you gaze upon the terrible, horrible face of... Skull Island! That's a duck! What are you talking about? Don't you see the skull? This island doesn't look like a skull at all. It looks like a great, big, enormous duck. It should be called Duck Island. Well, you see, you, you gotta squint and sort of turn your head and... Ooh, it's just so scary. If you squint and turn your head, it looks like a bunny. Well, anyway, see that light up there on the cliff face? That's Smuggler's Cave. It's run by King Andre, the greatest smuggler in the world. And his nefarious assistant, Cruff. But how do I get up there? You'll have to go to the top of the cliff. Won't you be coming with me? No, you must go alone. There will be someone there who will help you. But I warn you, beware of King Andre. He is as ruthless as he is bald. Good luck. Thanks. Hello. Can you tell me how to find the evil smugglers of Skull Island? Beats me. Oh, wait a second. Uh, I, I think I remember something about that at the orientation seminar. Let me think. The cave is halfway down this sheer cliff face. Climb on board this dumbwaiter. I'll, I'll lower you down. It looks pretty rickety. Are you sure it's safe? No. Never used it before, but uh, I'm sure it can't be that dangerous. I'm a temp here. The, the usual elevator operator, uh, Ronbeard, uh, he's sick, so I'm filling in. Uh, I guess that'll be okay. What's your name? It's LaFoot. Would you lower me down to the smuggler's cave? Sure, sure, I can do that. You, you must weigh no more than, say, 20 pounds, right? Actually, more like 120. Oh. Well, it can't hurt to try, right? No, you're sure about this. Oh, yeah. You don't look that heavy at all. Hmm. Is that not tied securely? Here we go. Okay, give me a little bit more slack. Whoops! Okay, that's too much slack. Hi there, neighbor. Got any diamonds? 
Wouldn't you know, but I'm fresh out. Go away. Darn. Let me try that again. So, uh, where's this huge diamond you guys are supposed to have? Uh, have at him, Croft. Darn. Let me try that again. Stand aside or I'll strike you down. Uh, I'll strike you down with how polite and reasonable I can be. We seem to have an unwanted visitor, Croft. Deal with him. Darn. Let me try that again. Good afternoon. I'm the new Skull Island Diamond Inspector. I'm going to have to see every diamond you've got. Every last one. Come on, people. Chop, chop. I don't have all day. I do not like this man. Kill him. Darn. Let me try that again. I have got so much money, it's almost embarrassing. Well, hello. Let's talk, Mr. Uh... Threeport. Guybrush Threeport. Very well, Mr. Threeport. I am King Andre, and this is my associate, Gruff. Were you looking for something in particular? The Good Soup Family Diamond. LeChuck stole it, you bought it, I want it. Now. <sighs> Please? Sir? But we have so much quality merchandise here at the Pirates Club. Our prices get lower every day. Everything a pirate or pirate in training could possibly want is here for the right price. <laughs> I don't get it. The Good Soup Diamond is the centerpiece of my collection. The fantastic energy flowing through it is the key to all my power. So, can I have it? Of course you can't have it. Unless you were to give me something in return. Maybe we could make a deal. As you wish. You are a formidable opponent, Mr. Threepwood, but it looks as if our game of cat and mouse must cease. It is a perfect diamond, one of the largest I've ever seen. I'll take it. And so it comes with a very large price. Eh, enough with the hard sell. How much? It will cost you an awful lot of money. Do you have that much? Well, I have a lot of money. <laughs> Not enough. My partner is right. We can't give it to you for anything less than an awful lot of money. But perhaps we can make a deal. My partner and I are very fond of cards, uh, poker in particular. How about a little wager? If you can defeat us at poker, you win the diamond. Sounds fair. Yes, fair. <laughs> Could you stop laughing like that? It's very unnerving. So, Mr. Threepwood, the question is to you. Care to join us in a game of cards? Sounds fun. Deal me in, Baldy. You will have to pay to enter the game. Well, how much do I need? Not very much. Sure, I can handle that. This is a lot of money. I better only give them part of it. Have you ever played poker before, Mr. Threepwood? No. Would you believe this is my very first time? <laughs> then I'll give you a brief explanation. The game is the simplest variety of five-card start. I deal five cards to each of us. We show our cards to each other, and the player with the best hand wins. Well, how do I know what makes the best hand? If you have any questions, just ask us. You do trust us, don't you? Of course I trust you. Very well. Let us begin. No whammies. No whammies. Take a moment to look at your cards. I've got four of a kind. Read them and weep. That's an impressive hat, Mr. Threepwood, but not quite impressive enough. I have four aces and a king. And I have four kings and an ace. Hey, wait a second. That's not... Terrible run of luck you're having, eh, Guybrush? Would you care to try again? You bet! I'm gonna win that diamond. Put up your side of the wager, Mr. Threepwood. Very well. Let us begin. Come on, sevens! Take a moment to look at your cards.
four death cards. And if I were the superstitious sort. I've got four of a kind. Read them and weep. That's an impressive hat, Mr. Threepwood, but not quite impressive enough. I have four aces and a king. And I have four kings and an ace. Hey, wait a second, that's not... Terrible run of luck you're having, eh, Guybrush? Maybe your luck will improve. Perhaps you should try again. No, thanks. I can't use the umbrella with that. Mm, no. That's a good thing I'm not afraid of heights. Oh, I don't feel so good. Keep that door closed! Sorry, uh, I just wanted to make sure Mr. Threepwood made it down all right. Excuse me. I'd like to go back to Blood Island. Me too. This place gives me the creeps. Madam Zima, I... Be gone! I'd like a ride out to Skull Island, please. All right, let's go. Yes? Let's try that lowering me down the cliff thing again. All right. <laughs> I, I think I'm getting better at this. Please be careful this time. No problem. Here we go. I got it. I got it. How about toys? Do you have any toys? As a matter of fact, a new shipment just arrived yesterday. They're sure to be bestsellers. Here, take one. Arg! Math be hard. Let's go shopping. Ahoy there, matey. You're my favorite sailor. You see your doom before ye. 
I'd like to buy something really piratey. Of course. Really piratey things are, of course, our specialty. Can I interest you in a peg leg? Well, that depends on what you do with it. That was a joke. Ah, yes. I don't quite follow you, but I'm sure it was amusing. I want to play for the diamond again. Put up your side of the wager, Mr. Threepwood. Very well. Let us begin. Good card. Daddy needs to lift the pirate curse. Take a moment to look at your cards. Five of a kind. Right there. Not even you guys can beat five of a kind. <sighs> You're correct, Mr. Threepwood. We cannot beat five of a kind. The question remains, however, whether or not you can beat a pair. A pair? A pair of murderous smugglers. Huh? Us, Mr. Threepwood. I am talking about us. We're gonna kill you. Oh, I get it. <laughs> whether or not you can beat a pair, that's pretty clever. Now, now, gentlemen. Let's not be too hasty. There's a delivery man out here with a package. You idiots! You blew out the lights! I got the diamond. Not for long, you little... Birch! Hit him, not me, you cretin! Who are you calling a bull for? There he goes! Get him! Got what I needed from the smugglers. Good. Let us leave this place of evil. Good luck on the rest of your adventures, Guybrush. What? You can't mean... I'm afraid so. This work is too dangerous for me. I'm going to find a more stable, secure line of work. I hear there's still an opening for a chef on Scab Island. Well, you'll be sorely missed. I know, but my destiny lies out there, somewhere. Beyond the rolling waves. Farewell, good friend Welshman. Oh, wait. Where'd you say Scab Island was again? East by Northeast. You can't miss it. Oh, thanks a bunch. Ah, whoops. I forgot to tell him that a magnetized pin will only have compass-like properties for a short time. I don't need any rocks. this diamond unless it's in a setting. Elaine can't wear this diamond unless it's in a setting. It's a massive diamond engagement ring. Elaine, 
Are you all right? Guybrush? Webb? Where are we? You're okay. We're on Blood Island. LeChuck's ring had a terrible curse on it, but I put everything right. You're safe and everything's gonna be fine. Just fine. <laughs> That be well spoken, pet. But save your breath, lass. You'll be needing it for when you scream. I do. Where, where are we? Don't you be remembering this place, Freepwood? Twas not long ago that I trapped you here to suffer tortures most foul. Wait, I can remember. I've seen this place before. Some terrible nightmare. It was no mere nightmare, Guybrush. Search your feelings. You know it to be true. Oh no. It can't be. But it is. This is the Carnival of the Damned. Aye, the Carnival of the Damned. You fiend, why have you brought us here? There be two reasons, you pathetic privateer. I be intending to torture and kill ye. And I'll be given Elaine. A treasure. Ah, uh, you're wasting your time, LeChuck. Elaine's love can't be bought. Ah, but this be a very special treasure. This be the fabled treasure of Big Whoop. Big Whoop? Hi, the very pirate treasure you were searching for before I caught up with you. What's so special about the treasure of Big Whoop? Isn't it just like any other pirate treasure? I see. Ye do not yet know the dreadful power that be Big Whoop. I guess not. Quake in fear, Threepwood, when I tell thee that Big Whoop be a damned portal to a demon netherworld. Okay. The treasures of Big Whoop be the very gates of hell themselves! Yay. But how will Big Whoop make Elaine love you? Elaine shall pass through the hoary gates of Big Whoop, just as I once did, down to the inky blackness of the infernal nether regions. For you see, Big Whoop gives those who pass through it the greatest gift of all, immortality. But at what cost? Cost? <laughs> Granted, people may find me a bit unapproachable now, and the smell does take a while to get used to. But it'd be worth everything now that I have the power to make Elaine love me. This whole amusement park, why? The Big Whoop Carnival was my most brilliant idea. Once I had the power of Big Whoop at my command, I could make Elaine mine at last. I see. But again, why an amusement park? I'll be getting to that. I knew Elaine would need a little coaxing, and that I'd be needing an army. A horrible army of the undead. Okay, but why an amusement park? Are you going to let me finish? I'm not talking just to hear myself talk, you know. You're right. I've been rude. Please, go on. Everyone knows that the life of a seaman is a long, hard, lonely one. Sailors spend months longing for just a few days' leave. And you know what they're looking for as soon as they get into port. Yes? A family-oriented fun park! Oh, that. <laughs> of course. They come to take a ride on the giant roller coaster, the Great Monkey Mountain. They reach the top of the highest peak and then hands in the air, screaming like monkeys. They plunge down the slope into a great stream of lava. That doesn't sound the least bit fun. Aye, it's not. In fact, it's downright unpleasant. But when they reach the other side, they're fitting warriors for my skeletal army of the dam. But if you kill Elaine, won't she hate you even more? Aye, 
at first, but soon she'll be understanding what a grand gift eternal life be. And besides, the dating pool will be surprisingly small when you're the living dead. She'll just have to give me another chance. Elaine will never marry you. She loves me. She does not. She loves me. Nuh-uh. She loves me. Does not. Anyway, Elaine really loves me. Does not. Does too love me. Does not. Does too infinity. Does... Uh, ah! Curse you and your diabolical debate skills. How did you find Big Whoop? That be a long story. Are you sure you want to hear it? Does the torture start after we're done talking here? I... Go on then. Back when I were alive, Elaine despised me. No. No, 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 it's true. I can see that now. She didn't like me at all. But I were determined to prove me worth to her, you see. So, I set sail to find the legendary secret of Monkey Island. What is the secret of Monkey Island? The secret of Monkey Island. I could tell you, but I'd rather make you guess. That the girl is her daughter and her sister? What are you talking about? No, it goes much deeper than that. It's an ancient secret, closely guarded uh, by the natives and uh, pirates who happen to... You don't even know the secret of Monkey Island, do you? No, not really. All right, then. Let's get on with your story. A few days after setting sail, my ship was caught in a terrible typhoon and was torn apart. I would have drowned but some friendly sharks found me and set me ashore on Blood Island. There I was, marooned, with no hope of winning Elaine's heart. I thought me luck had run out, but one day a ship made port at Blood Island. Twas the ship of one Captain Marley, Elaine's own grandfather. I struck up a conversation with Rum Rogers Sr., first mate on the ship. And for the price of a few drinks, I learned that they had the map to the legendary treasure of Big Whoop. Although I had no ship and no money. Hold on. Can I sit down? Both my legs are going to sleep. Although I had no ship and no money, I planned to beat Marley's crew to the treasure and take it for myself. I didn't have the money to buy a new ship, but I still had my greatest asset. Your resemblance to a moray eel? But I still had my greatest asset. That indefinable Chuck charm. One of the rich young debutantes on Blood Island was helpless against it. After a week with me, she would have followed me to the grave. Unfortunately for her, she didn't get the chance. I pried the diamond from her family's engagement ring and sold it to some cutthroat smugglers for the cost of a new ship. I've been called worse. With me new ship, I easily overtook Marley's crew and beat them to Big Whoop, which just so happened to be here on Monkey Island. What happened to Captain Marley and his crew? Their ship arrived at Monkey Island a half hour after mine, but they were too late to stop me from claiming me prize. 
and they watched me pass through the port in the big whoop. Craven cowards that they were, the power of what they saw overwhelmed them. They fled the island in terror. Marley tore his treasure map into four pieces and gathered his crew around him. There was Rum Roger Sr., the first mate, Rap Scallion, the cook, and young Lindy, the cabin boy. Marley gave each a piece of the map, keeping one for himself. They promised to guard those map pieces with their lives. I saw to it that they kept their promise. They were the only people alive to know about Big Whoop. What happened to Rum Rogers Sr.? He was taking a bath in his cabin near Fat Island, drinking rum and eating toast, as he always did while bathing, when the toaster mysteriously fell into the tub with him. Shocking. His son inherited the map piece, but was too much of a drunkard to understand its importance. <laughs> what happened to Rap Scallion, the cook? Rap Scallion died in a flash fire in his weenie hut on Scab Island. That's right. I brought him back to life with a voodoo spell. I remember it so vividly. Guybrush. Guybrush. Oh, I'm sorry, I was miles away. What were you saying? I knew about Rap's absent-minded tendency to leave his gas burners on. So I arranged for a fully lit cake to be delivered to him on his 35th birthday. <laughs> you can hear the explosion as far as Booty Island. That's horrible. Steaming weenie indeed. What became of young Lindy, the cabin boy? Fearing for his life, he came to me and begged for mercy. In return for not revealing the location of Big Whoop, I let him live. As a sign of me gratitude, I gave him a fortune which he used to build a successful advertising firm. Once he had grown accustomed to his wealthy lifestyle, I returned to collect me debt. I delivered to him an account so demonically ill-conceived that it was doomed to fail. Gangrene and honey. Within a month, he was penniless and insane, a broken man. He sold everything he owned and got so desperate, he fell in with a traveling circus. He was killed when he was shot from a cannon without a helmet. No one could be that desperate. What fate befell Captain Marley? I ambushed him while he was racing in the America's Cup. I boarded his ship and decided to let him determine his own fate. He could grant me his blessing to have his granddaughter's hand in marriage, or he could suffer a death more horrible than any of his crewmates. Well, what'd he say? Actually, he said quite a few things. Oh, the pain. Stop it, you're killing me. Some other things, I forget them all. I left him for dead and sent his ship into a whirlpool not even the most accomplished captain could escape. You're unbelievably ghastly and wretched. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I've heard enough of your evil stories. Let's get this over with. But there'll be so many more horrible things I'd be wanting to tell you. I'm not listening to you anymore. See, I'm ignoring you. Ah, you'd better listen! La 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 la, I can't hear you. La 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 la. Very well, Freeport. If you're going to act like a child, I'll help you get in the mood. I think you deserve a timeout, young man. I regret nothing. It's not locked. Your plan was flawless, LeChuck, except for one minor detail. That will be your downfall. He's taken it.
and Elaine on his roller coaster of death. I've got to reach her before she becomes his undead bride. What's happened to me? Head foggy. Can't think. I'm swimming. Must concentrate and rescue Elaine. I've got to save Elaine. But how can I save Elaine when I'm just a little boy? If only I could think straight. Must clear my mind. <laughs> Welcome to the Big Whoop Carnival, little guy. Come on over here and meet your old pal, Dingy Dog. Oh, for crying out loud. Are you the real Dingy Dog? <laughs> you bet I am, and I'm here to make sure you have fun, fun, fun. What's your name, little boy? Okay, for starters, I'm not a little boy. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, Mighty Pirate. Well, shiver me timbers, that's well. Don't you patronize me. Well, <laughs> it sounds like you've learned a very big word. You're a very bright little man. <laughs> That's well. <laughs> Laugh while you can. Soon I'll destroy LeChuck and your entire world will lie in ruin. You bet. Roll along and play now, son. <laughs> How can I win one of these fabulous prizes? Well, that's easy, <laughs> matey. If I can't guess your weight or your age, you get to pick what you want. What's the catch? <laughs> There's no catch. It's just that easy. Just try to guess how much I weigh. All righty. <laughs> let Dingy have a look at you, little guy. Uh, let me see here. I figure a strapping little pirate like you must weigh ooh, 98 pounds. Ha! The joke's on you. I just look like a little boy. In actuality, I'm a mighty pirate weighing in at... 98 pounds. This is really embarrassing. Am I not eating right? I've been working out. I'll bet you can't guess how old I am. <laughs> bet you I can. A little fearsome buccaneer like yourself must be seven years old. Ha! Wrong. I just so happen to be 20. <laughs> well, do you have any proof for your old pal Dingy Dog? You calling me a liar? <laughs> you bet I am. <laughs> I have my proof right here. Scum Actors Guild membership card. Guybrush Threepwood, age 20? I suppose you're right. <laughs> Pick your prize. Give me that anchor. Well, take it away, son. Congratulations. <laughs> Enjoy your stay here at Big Wolf. Look into your heart. I'm the prize you really want. Free me, my brother, and together we can rain terror across the land. Come on, pick me. You know I'm the best toy on the shelf. None of the other toys can summon the forces of darkness. What? You pick the anchor? Well, it's a really nice anchor, Murray. Sorry. I can't believe you, Murray. I'm not speaking to you. How could you pick that anchor over your best friend? It's Murray. Murray? I'm not speaking to you. What good is a dumb hunk of iron anyway? It's not even a real anchor. I'm a real talking skull. Hey, what do you think you're doing? I just want one of those pies. Yeah? Well, I just want out of this stinking rat head. Life's tough, kid. Cope. After all we've been through together. 
Fine. Take hands off! You would have made a lousy undead monster anyway. I'm going to wait for an owner who understands my need to bring fear and pestilence on the likes of you! You. Yeah, kid, what is it? Yikes, what is that horrible smell? It's a giant rat suit, you little brat! What did you expect, roses? Am I the only one nauseated by that terrible stench? Okay, okay, the suit smells. We've heard it! Everybody just come over and pick on the giant rat man. What's Dingy Dog really like in person? What are you asking me for? I'm just a giant rat. I'm not allowed to associate with his highness, the great and mighty Dingy Dog. Never mind. I'm going to wait for an owner who understands. Murray? I'm not speaking to you. Get out of here before I call up the demonic legions of Hades and set them upon you like a swarm of angry locusts. If you value your life, mere mortal, you will flee before Murray, scourge of the living and uber skull of the underworld. What kind of snow cones do you have? <laughs> what kind of cones did you ask? Why, I have every kind imaginable. I have the most distinct type of snow cones in the world. In fact, my cones are so original, so inventive, and so <laughs> unique that most are completely inedible. Let me list some for you. I have sweet cones, meat cones, cold cones, mold cones, bold cones with lime. Cones with slime. <laughs> veggie cones, veggie cones, edgy cones. I used some of my neighbor's edge in that one. Cones with spice, cones with ice, berry cones, berry cones, berry cones. And the Christmas, oh, 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 merry cones. So, what do you think of that? Hmm. I'd like a plain snow cone, please. Okay, kid. Bye now. I'd rather keep my snow cone. Oops, my snow cone melted. Nope. <laughs> that ride's just for bigger kids. Cute. A grotesquely enormous smelly rat. I can't go back there. I'm deathly afraid of mimes. What are you guys doing here? It's blow the man down, the most fun in the midway. Hit the funny clown and win a fantastic prize. 
Watch the pies fly from the cannon with blinding speed and loud report. And if your aim is true, go home with your winnings. Join in the laughs with your happy sailor host, Warfrat, and his pal, Monty Morang. What flavor? What? What flavor are the pies today? I don't know. Lemon meringue, I think. What kind of a stupid question is that? I want to shoot the cannon. I want to shoot the cannon. Sorry, little boy. You're too young. Blow the man down is for older kids. That's discrimination. How do I know it really works if I can't see it go off? Okay, kid, you want to see the cannon fire? Here we go. Fire the cannon again. I already showed it to you. Do it again. Do it again. All right, kid, just one more time. world is meringue. I don't know, kid. Whipped egg whites, I guess. Could you uh, introduce me to Dingy Dog? No, I can't. Now go away. Never mind. It's all that's left of my snow cone. I need to get on the roller coaster. I'll bet you do. <laughs> it's fun. But that ride's only for bigger kids. I don't care if it's not safe. I have to ride it now. Oh, no, 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 son. <laughs> it's not that it's not safe for little kids to ride. It's just that you've got to be much, much older to really appreciate the sheer mind-numbing terror of the coaster. <laughs> But wait a few years and you'll have matured enough to ride. You'll also be able to buy candy and eat it whenever and wherever you want. <laughs> Just like us grown-ups can. I'd like to speak to your manager. Oh, no, you don't, little boy. <laughs> Just the sight of my manager has caused children older than you to burst into tears. Keep up the good work. It says rides. It's the cannon they use to launch pies at the clown. I can't throw it that far. He's a mime. He doesn't talk. Get lost, kid! Good old-fashioned sturdy tunnel scale. Adorable. Well, that's not for free. <laughs> you gotta win it. I want to try for another prize. <laughs> All righty. I would guess that you are 20 years old and that you weigh 98 pounds. Wait a second, that's not fair. 
<laughs> Neither is life, son. You learned a valuable lesson today, and that's the best prize of all. <laughs> I really want to talk to somebody in charge. No can do. Let me on the roller coaster. Uh, nope. Keep up the good work. Now it's a heavy pipe hand. Over there. I found this pie tin. Oh, happy day! We're saved! <laughs> I was just offering. We don't need it, kid. Get lost! This pie pan won't do any good there. It's a heavy pie pan. It's a huge stack of meringue pies. Beat it! It's a huge... And I'll take that old snow cone for you. <laughs> Thanks. I'd like a plain snow cone, please. Okay, kid. <clears throat> Bye now. I'd rather keep my snow cone. This pie pan won't do any good there. It says snow cones. Oops, my snow cone melted. Yeah, kid? Hey, what do you expect me to do with that? Nothing. Never mind. No, that would be pointless. How does this whole booth work again? It's not that complex a concept, kid. Fire pies from the cannon at the guy in a clown suit. You hit him and win a prize. It's great fun. Fire the cannon again. I already showed it to you. Do it again. Do it again. All right, kid. Just one more time. Never mind. It says, guess your age and weight. I can't go back there. I'm deathly afraid of mimes. Now I've got a heavy pie pan full of shaving cream. <laughs> 